Hello and welcome to this tutorial, Blend tutorial. It's, it's going to be a tutorial on how to make a sort of warp jump effect like you see in Star Trek and other sort of sci-fi shows. This is the first tutorial I've made. I think someone requested it in the comments a while ago, but um, I might see about making tutorials because it's always sounded fun. Uh, this is going to be, it's going to be four sort of variations, four levels of detail based on sort of four different warp jumps from various Star Treks. Though I say sort of four levels, none of them are sort of better than the other. They all sort of work for different different sort of contexts and scenarios. So first thing I'm going to do is sort of set up the scene. I'm going to hit A, X, just delete everything um, as is tradition. And then we're going to get my spaceship, which I'm going to have jumping away. So this is the ship I'll be using. Um, the USS Manatee, I've, uh, I made it a while ago. This isn't going to be a, a tutorial on how to sort of make make spaceships, that's not what this is. There's, I'm sure there's hundreds out there. So it's sort of, this is assuming you have a ship that you want to use. Next I'm going to make a world collection. Uh, this is where I'm going to keep the camera and other sort of similar things. I'm going to hit Control alt 0 We'll bring the camera to where we want it. Camera to view, and I sort of get an angle you want. I'm going to follow this green line, the sort of Y line, and that'll sort of uh, that'll show us. Then we'll get a sort of angle. We can see it. It will disappear off into the distance. Let's go. There. Uh, so, oh, quick note. I'm going to be doing this in Eevee, so I'll go through sort of render setting once we do the first of the four renders. This. There's no reason why any of this won't work in cycles. I just prefer to use Eevee for animations because it's so much faster. Next, um, for the world, I'm going to have a sort of space world. This There are also, like with the spaceships, there are hundreds of tutorials on how to make a sort of space background. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to do the most basic possible space background. So you're going to go into the shading tab, world. Set the background. You're going to want... Um, a noise, some no a noise texture, and then a color ramp. If you plug the color ramp into this, and then switch to uh, rendered view so we can see the world, uh, pull the color into the factor, and then we're going to get a noise. What we're going to do is going to turn this up to I, I reckon 350 should be enough. Drag this in. If you drag the black up, it will just become you get a lot of dots. You can turn this up to five to make the stars a bit brighter. Or so you can sort of just sort of do what you want until you get something that you think looks how you want. I quite like that. So yeah, that'll do. Go back into the layout. Let's check if that looks with the camera. It looks great. We're also going to in the world. I'm just going to add in. A quick light source, just a quick sun lamp, make it quite bright because we're in space, and then rotate it, and then we can get to the actual sort of warping business. The first stage is quite simple, barely, I wouldn't even say it needs a tutorial for it, but it's necessary for the later things. When you see the show, it just sort of flies away, right? That's incredibly simple, you don't really need a tutorial for that. but the way we're going to do it is going to be a bit not what you might usually do just for the sake of the later stretching effects. If you were to, so mine, my ship here, it has lots of pieces parented to this main saucer. You might just have it all as one block. I don't know. But you might be inclined if you want to fly away and just have it move along an axis like that. Which is totally fair if that's just the effect you're doing. But for later sake, what we're going to do is going to bring in an empty plane axis, drag it to the back. <clears throat> if you're doing a warp in effect, like it's coming in towards you, you might want to put you might want to put it at the front. It might it will make sense later. Put it just as close as you can to the. Um, I'm going to use I'm going to use this vertex magnet sort of snapping. Snap to the very as far the very far back edge you can. And then I'm going to parent my spaceship to this. And now if we move this, my spaceship will move with it. 
I'm going to go to the point you want. I'm going to start. I'm going to have the jump start at about 60 frames. Keyframe, location, and then just have it move quite far away. I'm going to say 3,000 minus 3,000 along location. You notice it's, you can see it, it sort of disappears a bit too early than we might want. So we go to our camera settings and turn the end clip to about 5,000, and then you can see it go off far further into the distance. This needs to it's gonna to need to move a bit further because of this. No, I'm gonna make it I'm just gonna have it really high. So I'm gonna have like seven thousand five hundred and then it's gonna fly away another five thousand increments, or I'm not sure what it's measured in to be honest. But then we have it fly away. And it flies away quite fast. Uh I'm gonna set this to random just because I quite like it like that. You can uh, you can this sort of thing is all up to you, so you could have it be move away quite slowly if you want the interpolation mode to be sort of bezier so that you get that effect. If it's linear it will be a much more sudden jump. I'm going to have it as a bezier. And that's quite it's quite basic. A few more things we're going to add. First, if, you, if your ship's like mine that has some sort of warp engine glowy bits, you might want to go into the material for that and just before it warps off, just before it departs, go into wherever you've got your emission if you have that sort of glowing effect. If you don't, you don't need to do this. But you can crank it up really high, maybe 2,000. Maybe that's too high, but just 1,000. Uh, 750, why not? Keyframe it, go back a bit, and then go back to whatever it was originally. And then you get a sort of, if we enable bloom, you'll see it better, sort of the engine is charging up and then it sort of jumps, which I think always looks nice. And you get that in the show as well. In Star Trek, especially in the old, sort of older ones, sort of TNG era, they'll jump off and so there'll be a flash of light, so they disappear. And when I add that, just as it disappears, just as it goes out of our sight, and then we're going to add a, oh, we're going to add a sort of, I always call it a warp flash. So we'll create a sphere. It could be an icosphere, it could be a UV sphere. The shape, because uh, you sometimes in the show it becomes, it's like a star shape. So you might want to have it a bit, or it's a bit sort of tall. You can have it how you want. Make an emission shader. Make it quite bright. Quite big as well. I'm going to move it along and we're going to go, if you go here, we can actually see in the uh, this tab, I'm not sure what it's called, in the object properties, where it is on that axis. Whereas you might, yours might be, your scene, it could be flying away, it could be doing all sorts of maneuvers, so it could be, mine's quite simple, it's just along the y-axis. Yours could have been leaving from quite a specific trajectory. So by looking at this, you can find the exact coordinates, copy them, and give them to this. And then you're going to want to bring it down a bit. Partially so you can actually see it, but also because if you accidentally get it wrong and your spaceship is like in front of it towards the camera, then it could block out the light, which I've had happen and get annoyed at and had to fix. We'll make it, you know what, you won't actually be able to tell if you can make it a bit, a bit closer to the camera than would be sort of realistic. It's all sort of sci-fi nonsense, it's not realistic. And then what you're going to do is just as it disappears, your ship flies away and you'll get a a flash of light. As it, I'm not sure what the flash of light is supposed to be, but make it quite bright. Make the brightness just ridiculous. Make it, you know, 9,000, maybe not 9,000, make it like you can have be 5,000, shrink it, it's all. What I like to do, you could have it white, you could have it whatever you want, whatever colour you want. This is all. All of it is your choice, it's just sort of decisions, but I quite like to have, uh, if we go back here, my light to be the same colour or the same um, the same hue, H factor, as, we'll, we'll call this warp flash, keep everything labelled, so it's quite good to do, uh, as my warp engines, so I'll copy the hue in there, bring up the saturation a little bit, and then it's just sort of, 
I like to think in your mind it's almost, you know, sort of correlate it with the warp engines. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, you can bring up the, uh, the vibrancy a bit, that just makes it brighter. And then when they jump away, when our ship powers up his engines and boom, you can have it. At that point, we begin the keyframing. So, warp flash, scale it. No. So find a sort of point where it's the brightest. Keyframe a scale. Find a point where it disappears, where it's just starting to appear, and scale it to zero. So it basically doesn't exist. And then you'll get a sort of boom. And then I to have the disappear last a bit longer. Scale zero. And then if we look at it in this textured mood where we have the, the bloom. Maybe that's just a bit too long. So it jumps away. Flash of light. Um, even. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. Rendered viewpoint. And that looks fine. And that is sort of the most simple warp jump you have. I always just to make sure. Just be careful. You can do other things. You could, uh, you could have the brightness increase as it grows and then get dimmer. Uh, I like to just to be on the safe side. Keyframe its visibility in the render, so you don't get any sort of sort of jittery lights in the background every now and then. Just to be on the safe side. But you can add things, and that's the most basic warp effect. So I'm going to render that out. See what it looks like. Oh, so before I render it, we'll go through my sort of preferred render options for this sort of thing. If you're working in EV, it's good to just enable ambient occlusion. This, a lot of this is stuff that you get automatically in uh, motion blur to have. Using motion blur, you turn the steps up to 16. For this sort of thing, if you want it really blurry, which could be quite good for a warp effect, often there's like an over exaggerated. Uh, sort of motion blur on warp effects. You can bring the shutter all the, you know, just move player on the shutter to get what you like. Increase the steps of the motion blur. Screen space reflections, reflections rather, refraction on like high bit depth shadows. You can turn up the cube and cascade size. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to render it out. I'm going to I'm going to be keeping these settings, just ticking all the boxes, make it look nice. And I'll just have a quick what it looks like. Turn. Okay. And I think that looks great. Quick note about the samples, I've kept mine quite low because this is very quick. I just want to show you what it might look like um, fully rendered out. T actual animations, it's worth turning your site, site samples way up. I know some people do it way higher because they have better machines than me, but I sort of, mine usually set about 250 on EV. Um, the next stage, the next sort of uh, stage of our warp a warp adventure together will be the sort of the stretchy warp, sort of the most classic, I think most common throughout all of the Star Trek shows. The stretchy warp where the ship elongates as it jumps away. We can keep all of these will just be adding onto each other like layers. So we're going to be able to keep everything we've done now. Um, and this is gonna, now you're going to see why we're using this empty because if you were to just stretch the scale of your ship. It kind of it stretches based on the center of, is it the center of gravity? Or the origin they call it. Um, and that's not really what it looks like in the show. In the show it stretches from the back forwards if you were having, so, which is why we have this empty. Because now if we use this it'll stretch forwards. Which is what we want. And the earlier, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but if you're having it, the ship coming towards you, sort of dropping out of warp, it might be best to have the empty at the front so it sort of stretches towards you and then the back and sort of flies towards you and the back of the ship then catches up as you bring down the scale to we're going to have I think yes so we'll go about this point just a couple frames before it actually starts moving and we're gonna on the empty keyframe the scale move it along to where it starts warping and then have it properly stretched out. Maybe even... Why not 50? Why not get like crazy with it, you know? And 
keyframe the scale. And then you can move the keyframes around to get what you think looks best. And now we get this sort of, I think, it's, it reminds me of a sort of a, um, like a frog leaping. And it could be a bit slower, or it could be, it could be quite fast. I think. I think that looks good. And now we'll just quickly see what that looks like. Okay, I think that looks. I think that looks good. Good stretch. Good. I think that's a good. A good warp. It sort of, you know, stretches out and disappears. Next is what I'm going to just be calling uh, the discovery. Discovery warp. Because in Discovery, and I'm sure in uh, Picard and the other shows of that sort of era, you get this effect where it almost seems like the entire ship seems to glow. This is going to be done using, we're going to be changing the materials. Anything that has lights that already is emitting light, like the impulse engines, I know they should technically turn off when it goes to warp, but I'm not going to bother with that right now, and the sort of the indicators and the windows, I'm not going to change. But, any other materials in your ship, I'm going for this effect, uh, you're going to want to go here and then we're going to find the point when it starts to stretch, maybe? Yeah, I think when it starts to stretch. So this, we'll go to the, we'll use the main hull as the first texture, and we'll find the emission. Change this to, um, turn this up. Uh, what was that, what was the colour? We had that, change like a, get like a warpy colour. Not much saturation, but at least where it's visibly, if you're using like a blue warp effect or whatever, you know. And, um, until it sort of, you get, you get your glow. And set the emission strength to zero. And then as it, at the peak of the warp, so maybe just it takes off, have it be one. Or, let's go with two, let's go with two. Then you're going to want to do this to, uh, basically you're just going to want to go through we're going to remember, so we're going to copy, we're going to call it, yeah, we're going to copy this so it's all consistent. Remember the saturation is 0.3. We're going to turn the, uh, turn the vibrancy up, set the hue to that, saturation is 0.3. This is all just what I'm using, like with always. You can just do whatever you want for yours and go back to the point when it was uh, the point when it's on zero right where the keyframe is let's remember the number for next time go through it set this to zero and already just with those two which are kind of my main ones you can see it is getting brighter and that is uh, I was gonna go through with all my other materials set that and I'll render it out and we can see what that looks like. Okay, that looks fine, that looks good. A uh, thing with the sort of discovery, this sort of warp effect, is I think, in my opinion, it looks better quicker. So if you were to do this one, I would just recommend bringing the keyframes a bit tighter because I just think it looks a bit better, snappier with that effect. Um, I've just noticed I must have accidentally zoomed out the camera because um, the ship looks much smaller than it was earlier. Somehow I accidentally done that. Let's not worry about it, doesn't matter. Last thing is a sort of a, a warp trail. Like you get in, um, you see it in, I think, in Star Trek Into Darkness. They have it and there are a couple of different versions to do this. This isn't the sort of, you get trails in Enterprise and stuff, but this is going to be the sort of particle trail from from into darkness. So what we're going to want to do is first we're going to make our particle. So I'll put it in the world collection again. We'll get a little UV sphere. Uh, just make it make it a bit small, shade it smooth. It's not really necessary because it'll be so small you won't be able to notice. But why not? Eh? 
Um, go to a material, make it an emission once again. I'm going to get the hue to be the same as our as our warp hue. Make it quite bright. Um, maybe bring another saturation just a tiny bit. Yeah. Uh, still not sure. A little bit lower. Yeah, no, that's alright. No, mm, still not sure. Yeah, okay. Have I got on the? Have I got it wrong? Six four. Ah, oh, well. Anyway, so we have our, our particle, and we're going to call it. Let's call it warp particle. And then, not hide it, but move it really far away, out of sight. If you're using cycles, um, so if you're using EV like we are now, as long as it's out of sight. It doesn't matter. If you're using cycles, this will be casting light, because uh, in cycles the emission textures actually emit light. So I'm just going to move it like 5,000 down. No way we'll ever see it. And then we're going to go here, and these are mirrored, so I'm just going to apply it very quickly. So we have these faces, and each of these faces we're going to put into, I'll go into this mode so you can see better, a vertex group. So I'm going to select each of these, you know, you might have like a, uh, a Star Wars -y one where they're sort of fiery engine thrusters, in which case you'd select them, or just whatever bit you want to have the warp. You could have it coming out of the entire ship if you wanted, that would look awesome. But I'm going to have just these back bits where sort of uh, the warpy, the warpy bits, let's call them. Go into the uh, here, into the data, add a vertex group and assign and we'll call it warp group just using the word warp a lot at the moment uh, we're going to add a particle system then go to the particle system settings the first thing we're going to do is go to vertex groups and set the density to warp group now it will only come out of these end bits that we selected and you see it kind of as it jumps away kind of get you can already see what we're gonna, what's going to happen. You can already kind of see the effect we're going to get. We're going to field weights because we're in space, so the gravity to zero. And then we're going to also set when it starts. So it's going to emit just as it actually starts to move. So let's call it frame start 60 and emit all the way until it vanishes and we get the flash, the flash point. Flash point, that's a... Let's not call it the flash point. But then you can already see we get this trail effect. And then it'll disappear after. I want it... I want, when we get the flash is when I want these to catch up almost. I think that'll look cool if like these, these particles always hit it and then that flash happens. So, boom, yeah, I think that's good. And we're going to turn the lifetime randomness up. Not too much, actually, because you still want... Uh, hmm. Yeah, okay, I like that. At the moment, it's just these little dots, and that's why we're going to... Oh, I need to do that. Render, render as object. Select the object to our... What was it called? It was called warp particle. Let's go to the scale, set one. Then we can see we've got our little dots. I'm going to increase the scale randomness. I'm going to have the scale be... They're going to be quite small, these particles. They're going to be very small. But it's fine because they're going to have a lot of them. I'm going to have 10,000 of them, which is a lot of particles, admittedly, yes. But I think it'll be worth it. The velocity, I'm going to have zero normal velocity. But we are going to have just a little bit of random movement, I think. Just a little. Can you see them sort of, they're sort of drifting around, oh, just drifting around very slightly. Just a little, almost gives them a little sort of twinkle to them, I think. Yeah, just a little bit of movement. Uh, I'm going to cache it. So I'm going to do bake. Bake animation. That's all set up. 
and I'm gonna render it. This can be the final version um, of our warp jump. Let's see what it looks like. All right, I think that looks good. I'm yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this. Um, I mean, they're all quite sort of simple ideas, but stacked together, they make something that looks quite cool. I use this effect a lot, and I know this could have been helpful for me a while ago, so I hope someone finds it helpful. Thanks for watching. Um, goodbye!